Now let's move up to snares. And by snares, I mean snares, claps, you know, anything that's kind of on the on the two and the four. So again, I'm using a drum rack for the snares. Now the reason why I didn't use just one drum rack and have kicks and snares in the same drum rack, even though that might be easier, is I want independent control over the kicks and the snares. So as you saw previously with the kicks, you see I'm using this EQ curve and I'm using a specific compressor. I don't want this compressor on the snare. I don't want this EQ curve on the snare. For example, I, I'm not going to be rolling out all the high end on a snare because you want the snare to pop up in the high end. So I would use a very different plug-in chain. So I want my kicks to be running on a separate bus than my snares. It gives me a lot more control. So here we've got our snares and I'm using a combination of Vengeance samples and Gold Baby samples in this one. So I'll show you each individual hit. So this one's a nice chubby, weighty, low end sample, punchy high end sample, longer high end sample. And this one's got some interesting filter envelope effects going on on it. So I'll show you each hit individually. Let's start with the low one. So this one's got some nice low end punch to it. And as you can see here, what I've done with it is I've actually taken the transpose and I've pitched it down. Pitching your percussion is a really interesting technique to get comfortable with because it allows you to tune the percussion to your track melodically if you want to. Or the other thing you can really do with it is I use this and the snare sounded pretty, pretty chubby, pretty fat, but I wanted it to have even more low end punch. And so I pitched it down. Uh, sometimes, alternatively, with my snare layer, I'll use a pitched up kick drum to achieve the same effect. So again, get used to using the pitch on your drum sampler. And as you can see, I've added an EQ to this individual hit. Again, rolling out the low end higher than the kick because this is a snare, right? I don't need to be having all the sub in it. And I'm rolling out a little bit of the top end too because I have other samples in this chain providing the top end. All right, let's move to our next sample. This one, as you can see, I'm using the filter, high pass 24, filtered at 96 hertz. And this one is adding some nice kind of mid-range punch. I have this running through Isotope Trash. So only this one sample is running through Isotope Trash. And I'm using a lot of distortion on it, using clip control distortion setting. I'm also using a compressor on it with quite hard compression. I'm using a 4.5 uh, ratio, so that's pretty hard compression. And then in trash, I'm using again that wet dry slider. So what I'm getting is parallel distortion and parallel compression. So I'm getting some of the dry signal coming through and some of the wet signal coming through. So it's not, I just have more delicate control over it. It's an interesting balance between distorted percussion and clean percussion. I find the more distortion I use, uh, it loses some of the punch and impact. So I use a combination of heavily distorted percussion with clean percussion, so I get the best of both worlds, more or less. All right, next sample over. Now, these two samples, I'm using a little bit of a unique technique, and this one is using a filter envelope. So in Live Simpler here, what I've done is I've activated the filter envelope, and I have the filter on, I have a high pass 12 filter and I'm using quite a bit of resonance on it, starting with a filter frequency cutoff of 125 Hertz. Now what the filter envelope will do is it will automate the filter coming up and then back down again based on these settings. So I'm using the attack, decay, sustain, release for the snare drum. So I'm going to solo it so you can hear what it's doing. So this is an interesting technique to use on percussion because the filter envelope shapes the 
the frequency spectrum of the hit in real time as it's playing. So I just started doing this with my percussion and I really, really like the sound that it creates. So I think I'm going to be doing this more and more, but I wanted to show you guys as I learn it. Next hit over is the same thing, except it's even higher up. So this one has a couple things going on. It again is using a filter envelope, but instead of using the high pass 12, I'm using a high pass 24. I'm high passing it a little bit higher. And again, I'm using the filter envelope here with slightly different settings. And I've pitched the sample down a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. 